pin trim with 3,000 and a million bits at the moment. It just died just for no reason. I'm just having a look at the parts to see if there's anything I can see here. Here's the motor. It doesn't seem to be orientated in any way. The switch is at the bottom because that's where it comes out of the housing. Um, I'm just going to pull this assembly apart. Yep, that's the same problem. It's the same problem as this other guy had. Look at that. That wire, where is it? That wire there is broken. So, I need to figure out how I'm going to fix that. That's going to be tricky to fix. It's only a very tiny wire too. So yeah, that, that's definitely the problem. It looks like it's a common fault with these things. Um, I'm just going to I'll get my voltmeter and I'll test the connectivity between um, okay so what I've done I've started to do I've basically rewound I've pulled out one winding and we'll just zoom it out a little bit so you can see so I've actually where it was broken here I've um, just wound back a half a loop of the actual copper windings for that field and then you just get your screwdriver and where this clip uh, the clip where it was clipped in here I've just basically got a screwdriver and there's a groove there and I've pushed in and I've wedged it out and I've got it loose now so I should be able to pull that out and I'll see how it actually gets oh I see so basically all you need to do is, I'll pull this winding tight now, um, I'll put it through the hole, through that gap, so I'll wound it into that hole, I'll pull it tight down here, and I'll just reinsert it back in, and push it down, and that's, that's it. I'll just snip this um, overflow off, so here's a little little wire coming through the outside here I'm just going to trim that off it's very thin like it's tiny tiny strand uh, and I'll keep that I mean worst case scenario I could have used a resistor leg like like that a little little piece of resistor leg and I could have soldered that piece to the the copper but I think that's going to work. Um, so now I've just got it. So it wasn't there wasn't any actual specific orientation apart from obviously the um, the four prongs at this end match up with the four prongs on the um, on the switch and field mechanism. So that just that just I'll zoom out a little bit. So that just clips in like this. So that just clips into these four plastic slots here like that, one, two, three, four. There's, it's not a specific orientation, so it doesn't matter which way up it goes, but obviously you can't connect it at this end. Um, and then basically put it back together again, and it should hopefully work. So I'll just reverse the process. I didn't show you how I pulled it apart. This is in here. Oh, the spring, make sure your spring clip here stays in place this one here for locking the um locking the dr the drive so there's a little a little uh rubber ring here it's got a little lip at the bottom that actually just sits over the end of the bearing of the armature this in before i drop it into the housing so i'll just lift it up a fraction and put it into place and then drop it into the housing ah oh, and then put my little my little washer o-ring thingy on and then that sits in the housing oh watch out for your clip 
little spring clip here. It's a bit fiddly, but anyway. Make sure that's aligned with the hole. That's pretty important. And then that should drop down into location like so. Yep, and then, yep, so that's sitting in, in position. And then your uh, switch assembly, uh, power assembly, so this is your power board. That just slots in here. So I'll just try and clip this in. It should clip in like so. And the whole assembly should be able to be dropped into position. Uh, with a lot less emphasis on dropping, of course. That should sit back like so. That should drop into place like so. Drive should spin. So that's all. So basically, the whole thing goes together as one assembly. Then put your little side wings on. Um, so I actually I'll put those in last. I'll um I'll screw my power board on, uh, my power connection on. I need to feed this power connection, um, the cable connection in. So the brown was on this on this side here. I don't know if you can see that actually. Brown just slots into here. I'll just get this out of the way. So brown goes into this one here. And your blue one goes into this one here. Hold them into position and do a tighten them up. Just make sure just give it a bit of a tug and make sure. It's not going to come out. Right, so that just drops down into there. Basically pulling it apart is exactly the opposite of what I'm doing here. I know I'm showing you the, the end result first, but that's okay. It's the same process. Right, then we can drop in... Blow this housing out, get any little alloy parts out. That's located in, and we'll just drop this down into position. And that just clicks in place. Before you uh, complete the assembly, just press in the lock tab on this side, and just make sure that it locks. Yep, that's it. Locks in and out, otherwise you've got your spring and uh, your locking pin in incorrectly. Okay, so now I'm just going to drop in my Torx, my four Torx screws into here. Just tighten them up. You don't have to crank on these. It's only just to seat the housing together. Make sure she still spins freely. And then on your, so I can now push these tapes back together again. Two side tapes, because you've got to pull these stickers back halfway, because it joins in the centre. Line your uh, brush up so that it's in line with the armature going that way. It's not, not 90 degrees like that, it's got to go in like that. Hopefully, actually, it's a, it's a rectangle and you can't get it wrong. Actually, it is. Yeah, so you can't actually install it incorrectly. Okay, so that's that one. Be careful of this because the spring will pop out. So you can basically put down with pressure on and hold it down with your finger. And then get your brush. And do it up with your screwdriver. Just, just snip it up because it's just to hold it hold in there just a, basically a holder um, same with this here just drop this into position like so put pressure on the cap 
it's basically a two hand job make sure it doesn't spring out otherwise you're gonna have fun trying to find it make sure your switch all works properly um, and now I'll just plug it in and it's in the off position and I'll see hopefully I'll, I'll screw my little spindle back on hopefully that's fixed the problem otherwise we could have a big boom <laughs> anyway it's uh, we'll see how it goes so that's in the off position I'll just plug this in here see if it goes hopefully yes fixed nice and that's how you fix a Dremel 3000 common problem with those uh, windings snapping off by the looks of it the very lightweight it, you, I would have thought they would have actually joined that in a, in a better method anyway it is what it is thanks for tuning in and hopefully this helps someone out Westy over and out